Welcome back to our series on the Door of Faith as part of our celebration of the Year of Faith. I'm Father Bede McGregor, a Dominican from the Dominican community of St. Malachy's here in Dundalk, County Louth, on the east coast of Ireland. So, Cade Mila Fortier to you all, as we say in Irish, a thousand welcomes to you all. Now, in our last episode, we spoke about God's invention of the priesthood, his idea of the priest, his internal idea in the mind and heart of God, is the point of contact between God and ourselves. Today, I want to speak about the Eucharist, because the Eucharist is the source of all the other sacraments. It's the source of everything, of all grace. And everything leads back to the Eucharist. Why is that? Because the Eucharist is the presence of Calvary amongst us. It's the presence of the death and resurrection of Christ, really and truly present amongst us. And every grace, including graces of all the other sacraments flows from the merits of Jesus on the cross. And it's the cross of Jesus that's made present in the Eucharist. So that is why the Eucharist is so important. There is nothing of the divine life of grace that isn't centered on Calvary, on the death and resurrection of Christ. And that is what the Eucharist brings us. Now, in our work of evangelization, it's sometimes said that we should start with our greatest assets. Well, the greatest asset we have as Catholics is the Eucharist. You know, Frank Duff, the founder of the Legion of Mary, the servant of God, Frank Duff, because his cause now is fairly advanced, He wrote once that the Mass is the last thing on earth about which we should be silent. It's our greatest treasure. So that's what we want to try to unpack, try to reflect on during this year of faith because the Eucharist is the great mystery of faith. This is the place where we make such a personal, intimate, real contact in faith with the risen Lord. You know, the most distinctive aspect of our Catholic faith is the presence of Christ in the Eucharist and in his mystical body, the Church. That is the most distinctive center of our Catholic faith. We Catholics are known because of the Mass that we celebrate, the Eucharist. So, you know, these last 20 years or so have been really a magnificent time in terms of the teaching of the Church about the Eucharist. There are so many wonderful documents both of the Second Vatican Council, the Universal Catechism, and very recently here in Ireland, we celebrated the Eucharistic Congress. It was the 50th Eucharistic Congress. So we have a massive amount of fantastic material about the Eucharist. So is it possible to summarize all this teaching in one sentence or paragraph or at least in one reflection on the Eucharist. I think it is. So the bottom line of all our Eucharistic reflection, all our Eucharistic theology and writing, all the words of the saints and the popes can be reduced to one luminous sentence that the Eucharist is not something, the Eucharist is someone. The 
Eucharist is the real presence of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, who lived and died and rose for us, really present to us in total accessibility. Body, blood, soul and divinity intimately present to us, offered to us in friendship and communion. That is basically the reality of the Eucharist. So let's try to reflect a little bit about that. First of all, we see it in all the saints. It's impossible really to live the Christian life without the Eucharist. As the Second Vatican Council says, the Eucharist is the source and the summit of the whole Christian life because everything comes from the Eucharist, from the death and resurrection of the Lord. So look, let's look at a few of the saints. You know Mother Teresa whom I had the privilege of meeting many times as a young missionary in India. She once said to me that her charism was that she went from the presence of Christ in the Eucharist to the presence of Christ in the heavy disguise of the poorest of the poor, those who were loved by no one, the sick poor, the destitute, the forgotten. But she wouldn't be able to do her apostolate. She wouldn't be able to live and work and love the poor if she didn't have Jesus in the Eucharist. That is just one great testimony. That is the witness of Mother Teresa to the Eucharist. It's a very profound witness because in the Eucharist we have the presence of the divine heart of God and the human heart totally focused on us. It's in the Eucharist that we learn to love. And it's in the Eucharist that Mother Teresa saw the source of her apostolate. That's where she learned to love the poor and serve them. And it's the same with all the saints. It's our union with Christ in the Eucharist that enables us to love one another, to build community. That is why Pope John Paul talked about the Church taking its whole being from the Eucharist, the whole reality of the Church, of every community within the Church, every parish, every apostolate takes its whole source from the Eucharist. So we really do need to, in faith, to get that central mystery of the Eucharist. You know, take another saint, the little Saint Bernadette of Lourdes. She had some lovely things to say about the Eucharist. She says, Nothing on this earth and nothing in heaven itself gives more glory to God and obtains more benefits for us than a single Mass. Or she says again, all the merits of the heart of Jesus are ours. Offer them in payment for your debts and in thanksgiving for all his benefits. All that I have is yours. God gives us the totality of his being. He gives us the mystery of the Trinity and the mystery of the Incarnation in the Eucharist. Because in the Eucharist we receive not only the body, blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ, but Jesus is inseparable from the Father and the Holy Spirit. And therefore we receive the Trinity itself. Really it's very difficult to get, be more profound and to be at the very sources of holiness in the Christian life than in the Eucharist. So, let's just think a little bit about the, the Mass. The 
different parts of the Mass. Of course, we begin with the confession of our sins, asking the mercy of God. Then we go on to the liturgy of the Word, which is God himself speaking to us through human words, through the instrumentality of the priest. But it's God who is celebrating the liturgy of the Word with us. Then we go into the actual Eucharistic prayer when our Lord says, this is my body, this is my blood. The realism of our Catholic faith, the realism of the Eucharist, this is my body, this is my blood. In other words, our Lord said, this is me. I am totally at your disposal. It, it really is fantastic what God has given us. You know, you, God cannot give more than his total self to us. Then we have the moments of communion when we receive our Lord person to person in Holy Communion. We talk about the door of faith it's in faith that we enter through to the heart of the Eucharist and all that it means to our Lord. With desire, I have desired to eat this Pasch with you, this meal, this Eucharist. You know, the Last Supper our Lord gives us this tremendous gift of the Eucharist. Do this in memory of me. It gives us another gift, of course, and he's dying, two, two great gifts and two great commands, invitational commands. Do this in memory of me and behold your mother. Today we want to just keep focused on the Eucharist itself, this first tremendous command and gift of our Lord in the Eucharist. It's the soul of the apostolate, it's the heart of ecumenism. The biggest sorrow for our Catholic community is to see people deprived of the Eucharist. That is the ultimate motive for our commitment to ecumenism. Because we want everyone to meet our Lord in this tremendous sacrament of the Eucharist. We cannot offer a greater gift to anyone than the gift of our Lord himself. If you think of evangelization as facilitating the meeting between our Lord and another soul, it's in the Eucharist that you most intimately introduce him to Jesus. That is real evangelization. Bringing someone to this lovely, beautiful gift of Jesus himself in total accessibility, in total commitment to us. That really is what evangelization is about. Helping people to meet the Lord, but particularly in this tremendous sacrament. That's the only reason why EWTN exists. There's no other reason really, except to introduce people to the risen Lord present in the church, but most of all present in the Eucharist. And that is why you have the celebration of the Eucharist. Uh, you know, people can sometimes miss these central truths. I often think of the story of Martha and Mary. You know, St. John tells us in a very simple sentence, in a beautiful sentence, he starts in John chapter 11, he says, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. First of all, St. John doesn't name Mary, it's only later, 
It starts with Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And then you know the story well of how Martha was very busy giving hospitality to our Lord. And she started to give out about her sister Mary. Lord, would you tell her to give a hand? She's leaving everything to me. And our Lord said those beautiful words, Mary has chosen the better part. Now, our Lord is not saying anything against the activity that's involved in all hospitality, getting things ready, cooking meals, greeting people, holding conversations. Our Lord understands these, and that's why it's important to remember that line of St. John, Jesus loved Martha. So he's not right, but he's, he's stressing the primacy of contemplation, the primacy of intimate conversation with himself. Mary has chosen the better part and is not to be taken from her. The primacy of prayer, the primacy of this meeting with our Lord in the Eucharist. You know, there are so many religious orders of men and women that God has raised up in the church to highlight this principle. Recently I saw a wonderful movie on the Trappists in Algeria. I think it was called Of God and Men. Life of Silence. The primacy of contemplation, the centrality of the Eucharist with these Trappist monks. It's the center of all the contemplative orders. But we could make a mistake here. You know, like in contemplation, for instance, everyone is called to a life, contemplative life. By contemplative life, I mean simply looking at our Lord with love, having friendship with the Lord. That's what contemplative life is. Now, God raises up purely contemplative orders who do nothing else but proclaim the primacy of the contemplative life, of contemplation in the life of every Christian. We are all called to this intimacy without exception. And it's the same with the Eucharist. Today the Lord has risen, raised up so many wonderful lay communities centered around the, the Eucharist. It's not because the Eucharist it's only for a select number of very, very dedicated Christians. No, no. The reason is to proclaim in the Church to all of us that all of us are invited to be Eucharistic people. That's the reason why we have all these contemplative orders centered on the Eucharist. Now, let me now go to one of the great theologians of the Eucharist, in fact, probably the greatest theologian of the Eucharist, St. Thomas Aquinas. It was St. Thomas wrote the office for the Feast of Corpus Christi, all those lovely hymns, the Pange Lingua, all these beautiful Eucharistic hymns were written by St. Thomas. St. Thomas had a great fear of thunder and lightning. And when these storms hit Italy, because he was an Italian, he used to put his head to the Blessed Sacrament, to the tabernacle, and stay with the Lord, this tremendous devotion to the Lord. And then when he was coming towards the end of his life, Our Lord spoke to him and said, Thomas, you have written well of me. What reward would you like? And Thomas said, nothing else but yourself, O Lord. And one of his lovely Eucharistic prayers is called the O Sacrum Convivium, O Sacred Banquet. And it goes like this, O Sacred Banquet in which Christ is received, the memory of his passion is renewed. 
The soul is filled with grace and the pledge of future glory is given to us. So let's just briefly reflect on each of those. O sacred banquet in which Christ is received. That's really enough. The Eucharist is Jesus, the very presence of the risen Lord. We receive him. O sacred banquet in which Christ is received, the memory of his passion is renewed. And it's not just the memory, it's the whole actualization, the reality of the passion and death of our Lord is made present. There is no more merit in Calvary than in the Mass. The Mass is exactly the same merit and grace as Calvary. Why? Because it's the same reality. The Mass is Calvary made present amongst us. The memory of his passion is renewed. The soul is filled with grace. The fruit of the Eucharist is the indwelling of the Trinity within us through grace. That's a specific fruit. We receive the Eucharist so that we may habitually live and abide in the mystery of the indwelling Trinity with us. The soul is filled with grace and the pledge of future glory is given to us. Again, this is a tremendous part of the Gospel of St. John. Whoever eats my flesh will live forever. The pledge that the Eucharist gives us. If you receive our Lord in faith and love in the Eucharist, you are guaranteed eternal life. That is a tremendous promise by our Lord. Whoever eats the flesh of the Son of Man and drinks his blood will live forever. And he repeats that several times in that wonderful chapter 6 of John's Gospel. And it's good for us, it's a great consolation for us to know that our devotion to our Lord in the Eucharist really is already an anticipation of the life of heaven. The Eucharist is heaven on earth. The Mass is the celebration of heaven. There's nothing more celebrated in heaven than in the Mass. The celebration and the joy of what God has given to us in the death and resurrection of his son. So that is St. Thomas's great contribution to the whole reflection of the church on the Eucharist. But let's come back to St. Ter Blessed Teresa of Calcutta, because she's one that you all know. She has some lovely words on Holy Communion. And I'd like to leave these words with you. She says, Nowhere on earth are you more welcome. Nowhere on earth are you more loved than by Jesus living and truly present in the most blessed sacrament. The time you spend with Jesus in the most blessed sacrament is the best time you will spend on earth. There you have a woman who was immersed in activity, who had ceaseless activity amongst the poorest of the poor, travelling the world in the name of the poor and for the poor. She was able to say to us the most precious moments in her life, the place where she felt most welcome, most at home, most graced. The moments and the place where she has no regrets about is the Eucharist. Really, my dear viewers, that really should be the secret of all our lives. Sometimes we're very tired and we've very little to say to the Lord. We just we don't want to just be rattling off prayers, so to speak. Sometimes it's good just to sit there with the Lord and perhaps say, Lord, it is good for me to be here. 
thank you for allowing me to be with you. You know, some of the great modern apostles, evangelizers, take a man like Archbishop Fulton Sheen and his introduction of the Holy Hour with the Eucharist. On the day of his ordination, he made that promise that he would spend a whole hour with our Lord in the Eucharist. And he kept that promise all his life. And he said so simply, I'm nothing without the Eucharist. That has been my lifeblood, that holy hour. And when Fidel Castro in Cuba asked John Paul II, what's the secret of your, where do you get your energy for all this traveling and all this preaching and all this teaching and all these meetings, all these writings? Where do, where do, where do you get the energy? Did his finger and he said, the Eucharist. I start the day with the Eucharist and everything flows from there. Fantastic. But it's basic truth. We learn it in the Catechism. So we're talking about faith in the sacraments. Go through the door of the Eucharist with faith. And you've discovered everything. Ask Mary, the mother of the Eucharistic Lord, the woman of the Eucharist, Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament, ask her to help you to understand and love our Lord in his real presence, the Sacrament of the Eucharist. Thank you for listening. God be with you and please God, come back and listen to our next episode which will be on the, the sacrament of reconciliation and the anointing of the sick. God bless you once more. God bless. Mm -hmm.